So welcome to the interview with Randy Schrag. Wendy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. How's Hi. everything in Minnesota? It's a little chilly today. Yeah, we had some chill too here. Though spring is coming. Yeah, we had a few little snowflakes this morning. Oh boy, <laughs> it's still April. All right. Well, I am honored to talk to you because I am impressed by what I see from you on Instagram and not only what you produce, but also what you say about what you produce. Well, thank you. And, and my passion is helping people be successful by design, not by chance, through what I call conscious responses and not unconscious reactions, though that's in leadership. And when I say those words, I realize that, like, that's not art, because art is, is, is something totally different. So I, I am very interested in what you do. And I'm curious, how did you get started as an artist? And when did you realize I'm an artist? And you could actually say to somebody those words, I'm an artist. That's a brave step. <laughs> uh, well, it all started with some tempera paint and a pad of paper and a freezer in my basement storage room that I used as my easel. And it was about five years ago. And it wasn't until about three years ago that I really took that brave step of calling myself an artist. Uh, it was a journey that was just full of exploration and it was a rediscovery of creating. I've always loved to create, but this was a rediscovery of that. And the commitment to doing it on a regular basis. And it brought me so much joy. And I felt freer than I had in so many years. And I felt like uh -huh. I could speak with a voice that I hadn't been able to speak with before. So you went about 55 years with its inner artist in you that all of a sudden came out. It, it wasn't all of a sudden. Okay. It, there were things that I did along the way, uh, you know, creatively along the way, right. but never truly claiming myself as an artist, never looking at this as a career, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, if, if a career can bring you joy like this does. Oh yeah, I, I hope so. That, yeah, then that is, that qualifies. So tell me, what, what is your creative process? How My, do you get creative? How do I get creative? Um, it, you know, it's a regular studio practice, and that's what I've had to commit to. Um, that part of it is a little bit tricky, um, making the commitment to that. There are days where you just don't feel it. And mm. those are days I, during COVID that that was part of the problem. Um, in the beginning of COVID, it was hard to find the focus and to find the energy and even the desire to create. Uh, I felt like the world had just been turned upside down and I had to remind myself that it was okay to have days where mm -hmm. it just doesn't feel like you want to create and you have to be okay with that and give yourself that time. Um, it, I realized I wasn't alone in my feelings very quickly mm -hmm. and I decided that it was important at that point to find an accessible way for anybody who wanted to be creative to do that. And well, have what you produced before COVID and what you're producing now, have those things changed? Coloring, uh, products, methods? I would say that art is ever evolving. I don't think that there was, there, there isn't a clear cut path. Okay. Um, you're, you're always learning, you're always creating. Yeah. It, one thing is always informing the next. Um, and I think that's the beauty of it. There's a freedom in that. There's also a lot of pressure that comes with it, self-imposed pressure that comes with that. Mm. Uh, but that's part of the whole process, learning how to quiet all of that and continue that creative process and let it flow and, and let that voice come out. So do you, you, you get inspired in the studio right there and decide to do something creative? Though, do you also get inspired when you're upstairs, I don't know, cooking or cleaning or taking your grandkids out or something? And the idea comes, what do you do with it? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm inspired by everything that I see. I think that I view the world in a yeah. unique way. Um, I, I look at, for example, the way light hits certain things, light <laughs> and shadow play, um, look at cloud formations, look at colors in nature. Um, and I don't think that there's any one thing that is a direct influence on what mm -hmm. I do. It's a culmination of all of those things. It's a gathering of information that happens. It's a process. And all of that somehow distills itself 
and winds up in whatever I'm creating. And there's, there's a lot of inner work that goes on with that too. Um, rediscovering the inner child, I think is oh. huge. And wow. allowing that, yeah. inviting that inner child to come out and play. Earlier, you told me you were doing, you were experiencing, experimenting with some scribbles. Yep. Can, we, can show, show us that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just line work, little scraps of paper. Yeah. And what that line does, so I can take it from just a basic mm -hmm. line, expressive line, um, try adding some color into it. So wait, here's the thing. If you have a big inner critic, yep. your inner critic will tell you that stupid looks like something a kid would do and nobody's going to want that. Though, once you harness your inner critic and think it, what do you tell your inner critic to let it out? Push it to the back of the room, kick it out. Yeah. It's not invited into the studio. And you that's know, I, hard. Some days that's really yeah. hard. I, I tell people that when they present, a lot of people, when they get up in front of an audience, they want to be perfect. They want to like, and if it's not written on their script, they're, they're upset because they forgot the word is instead of were. So I tell them nobody's going to know it except for you. And, and so you, you, you have to accept your inner imperfections and the imperfect you. So I guess, it's the same with art. There's no, exactly. there's no perfect. Exactly. What, what, do you, what do you tell people when they say, oh, I'm not creative or I'm not an artist? What do you feel and what do you tell people? I think that everybody has the ability to mm. be an artist. I truly do. Um, and I would encourage everybody to give it a try. I think yep. that we have inside of us. I mean, each of us as a child is born an artist, truly. Mm. And if you've ever watched a child create, you mm. see them with their crayons or with their paints and, and their tongue out. And their tongue, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something international about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're free from inhibition mm. and, and they, they just create and they may draw a tree that's red and they may draw a cloud that's purple. Yeah. And they're okay with that. And it really isn't until somebody comes to them and says, that's not supposed to be that color or that isn't supposed to look that way. Uh -huh. But that inner critic starts to work. And so they're like, oh, the tree has to be green and, and the, the house has to have smoke with coming out of the chimney, look like this. So, oh, okay. Right, yep. We, we become like formatted? Your arms don't stick straight out and they don't have little clubs on the end of them. Oh, but yeah. you know what? They don't care. And until somebody introduces that, mm. they're free. They're free to create. So that's my inner child. You got to find it again and love it. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So I, I always try to go back to that, to find Boy. what truly brings me joy in that creative process and how I can let all of that other stuff go. And it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a job every day to let that go. Um, but there's nothing greater than falling into that creative mm. groove and just letting things happen and responding to things that are happening. So when you leave the studio for the day and yep. you know you had a great day, what happened and how do you feel? Again, there was a freedom in that creative process. Mm. Um, it isn't necessarily the fact that I completed something because mm. that, that doesn't mean anything. Um, to me, it's more, what have I learned? What have I discovered in that creative process? And mm. how can I now continue to apply that, learn from that, grow from that? Where do I take that next? It's okay. wanting to come back to the studio oh. with an excitement in that exploration the next day. And you know, it, it working in the studio doesn't always have to be an all day thing. Right. There are times um, where I, I just feel like I don't have the time in the day to do it. Hmm. But even if I set aside 10 or 15 minutes to work, sometimes those 10 or 15 minutes are the most valuable 10 or 15 minutes that I spend. Quality time. In the so I, I, I have a kind of a funny question and a comparison here. So I, I have a dog, this dog, long-haired, wiry-haired dachshund, Nelson. And I walk my dog in the neighborhood and, and people come up and want to talk to me and they want to pet the dog. Yep. And, and, and then maybe they have a dog or they talk to me about their dog. Though I find we, we, we create this connection and, and I call it, we talk dog. Mm -hmm. uh, You've exposed, you, you know, you've, you've sold art, you've exposed, you've got, how, how does art connect you to other people? 
you know, art, in my opinion, is a way to tell stories. Mm. And it's a way to share stories. And as an artist, I can express something that I feel deep inside me. And the viewer can interpret that in a way mm. that resonates with them, mm. which is why I always hesitate to give a lengthy explanation about what I was thinking about when I created a piece of art or mm. where my mindset may have been. And I think through that, each of us with our own unique stories, knowing that no two of us are exactly alike, mm. can all be connected in some magical way. And I think that art can be that universal language. It breaks all the barriers and it brings us all together. And it speaks an un unspoken language that's free of judgment. Just great. I suppose your coaching question to people is when they see a piece is, do you then ask them, what do you see before you I tell them what you, you thought? No, I honestly don't. I, when I see somebody looking at a piece of mine mm. or when I did prior to COVID. <laughs> It'll come back soon. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but, but it truly brings me no greater joy than to watch somebody observing a piece of art that I've created. There's mm. something in that, that, that is, it stops me in my tracks to see somebody take the time to really spend time with a piece mm. of art. And I want to give them that time. I won't ever approach somebody when they're looking at something immediately because I want to give them time to find their story, to find their place with that piece of art. And only after they have, a, have had that time do I then approach them and, and enter into a discussion. And I typically will let them lead the discussion and see what, what it is they want to know about it. And, okay. and I do love to hear their story. Do you get information from them afterwards, where they hang it, what they do with it, how it, do you, do you have a connection on that? I try to, yes. Um, I, I love to have people send me pictures of the right. art in its new home. Yeah. Uh, brings me great joy to see. Oh, I can't wait to have something of yours here. Get a little bit of reds and oranges, please. Though I have something here and, and the artist Enrico, Enrique, he's in Venezuela and we, we talk on Instagram and and he's, he's just like send me another picture of you with so we created a connection with with this piece okay i can't wait to see your studio show me around and and like tell me what you're working on these days what well, are you doing my student i'm gonna have to turn my computer to do this so okay I'm, we're with you I can, I can actually move so we'll bring us um, this is kind of a sneak preview because i haven't really released any of this yet but what i've oh. been working on recently has been a series of black and white work and it started with line work. Um, there was a, a freedom of expression. To me, again, that line is so expressive. And springtime, people always associate with color, bright mm. color. And to me, there was this energy. There was this force. And you ask how I was inspired. Um, I guess it goes back to a walk that I took. And I actually saw a little, could have been a weed, emerging from through the pavement. It had pushed its way through. And the power of that in my mind, that line that came up, the power of that was striking to me. And the energy that it took for that weed or that plant to emerge through that blacktop, and it struck something with me. So from that, I started to create this series. And it, even though it's not colorful, it still feels like the energy of spring to me. I'll bring one piece over that I've had going. Um, We'll make a trade out here. And it's it's energy. And it's not done at this point. I don't okay. know where to go, but it is it's about energy. That's great. And and it's a feeling. I can feel the energy moving around in it of, of doing this. So what do you think you're going to go to with it next? What kind of stuff or you don't even know? I don't even know. It's, it's all an exploration. I've been layering line on top of line. Okay. Um, okay. You know, pushing things back, drawing things forward. We'll I love see. the inner trust. We'll the, 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 and trust that's, the process. That's great. That is, that's exactly. That's what it's all about is trusting the process. You know, it's funny because when you, you, you talk to people like in the corporate world, the world I know a little bit and people tell you, what they want their career progression to be. And then you're like, well, 
So then they find it's a sign, you know, a route that kind of goes this way and this way and that, and that there is no end to end E to B. Right. And I suppose art is the same. So I yes. see comparisons. Yeah. I mean, art really isn't about trust. It is about trust, but it's more about allowing, in my opinion. Um, I think it's based on a desire to discover. Mm. And like I said before, I enter my studio and I have this willingness to learn and to explore. And I want to find a balance between the knowable and the unknowable. And I want to build on my experiences from one body of work to the next, letting one inform the next. Um, setting things into motion, if you will, and responding to those things. Right. And I just, every day I remind myself to play more and to trust the process, like you yeah. said. Yeah. And I always ask myself the question, what if? Hmm. What if I did whatever it is? What if, what would happen? What if? And through that, that exploration. And are you, when you're working fully in the moment, Absolutely. You're not what somebody said earlier, what you can do later, or you're fully in the moment. I try to be. <laughs> I'm not always that successful, but I try to be. That's my goal Got is it. to be in the moment, to just allow the process to take over. And anytime you let the thinking mind in, mm -hmm. I think you run into trouble. There's a place for that, but that doesn't come until the very end of a piece when you really need to make those minute critical decisions. I think mm -hmm. then it's okay to let that thinking mind in, but otherwise out the door. Trust yourself in the process. Respond, right. Just respond right. to movement, respond to what you've created already. Beautiful. Let that dialogue begin mm. and continue to respond. Wow. Tell me about the other pieces on the side, the smaller ones. The smaller what, ones. How did they become and what are they? Yeah, those are a series that I created. It is my conceptual beginning series. I'll bring one a little bit closer. I'll bring one closer. Um, these were started as a color study. Uh, I was studying value and I wanted to see how colors work together. And I, I developed this grid pattern with the circles. Circles are a big part of my work. Mm. Uh, they tend to show up and, and even in going back to work that I've done previously, the circles have always been there. Mm. So somewhere deep inside, it has meaning, whether it's full circle, whether it's circle of life, whether it's, I don't know, but it's there. I see so, the circles also in the, in what you're drawing earlier, the piece of paper yep. and behind you. Yep. Yep. Wow. So I started to create these series and it's, it's a mixed media piece. It's collage work, it's paint. Um, but working within the framework of that grid to an extent, there's also a freedom in that. Um, so there's that one. And there's another one that I've been working Beautiful. on. Okay. So give me, give me your information where people can see your stuff. Facebook, yes. Instagram, like where, where, where do we go? Yep. I am on Instagram at Wendy Schrag underscore designs. Okay. We're going to put and that on the screen so people can see it. Okay. Great. Great. And my website is wendyshrog.com. And I'm on Facebook, Wendy Shrog Designs. Beautiful. Wendy, I want to thank you because it's been insightful. And, and when I need to create, now I'm going to remember how much I need to trust the process and, and, and not use the thinking mind as much as the allowing mind in the inner child. Absolutely. And if you ever want any help, I'm here. Well, thank you because you never know. I mean, after COVID, if you had... One parting piece of advice for people, what would it be? Do what brings your heart joy. Wow. Thank you. So with that, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing your art as it continues to move. And we're going to, I'll keep driving traffic to you on Instagram and all the other platforms. Thank you very much. Very generous to spend time with us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great Thank talking. you.